At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black mass mid-range deck featuring a lot of the new cards from War of the Spark. So let's dive right into it here. One of the build-around cards in the deck is Dreadhorde Invasion, a 2-man enchantment that says at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life and amass one, which means that if we don't already control a zombie army creature token we get to make one, so it starts out as a 0-0 token with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each time we amass, and then if we already control a zombie army creature token we get to put an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it for each time we amass, so the Dreadhorn Invasion starts us out with a 1-1 zombie token that will keep on growing turn after turn, and then whenever a zombie token we control with power our 6 or greater attacks, it gains a lifelink until end of turn, so we get to make up all the life we lost to the invasion. Resolving an early Dreadhorde invasion against a control deck is great since they don't have many great answers for enchantments, and the invasion will just keep on generating tokens even if they wrath the board, you still get your board presence back thanks to the invasion. And against the more aggressive decks, the plan is just to build up a giant army token as quickly as possible, and then start gaining that life link as soon as possible so we can make up for the lost life, and try and win the race that way. And then another very important card in the deck that synergizes nicely with the Dreadhorde Invasion is Soul Diviner, 2 mana for a 2-3 zombie wizard. We can tap Soul Diviner as well as remove a counter from an artifact, creature, land or planeswalker we control in order to draw a card. So if we control both a Soul Diviner and a Dreadhorde Invasion, every turn we could decide to remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from our zombie army token in order to draw a card. And then once we're satisfied with all the cards we've drawn, we can go on the beatdown plan instead. And then we've also got some other permanents in the deck, where we can remove those counters from to draw more cards with the Soul Diviner. So let's take a look at our entire deck list here. At 2 mana we've also got the full 4 copies of Lazotap Reaver, 2 mana for a 1-2 Zombie Beast, and when the Reaver enters the battlefield we get to amass 1. So if we don't already control the Zombie Army token we get to make a 1-1 token, otherwise we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Zombie Army we already control. So the Lazotep Reaver can help us grow the token we get from the Dreadhorde Invasion and get it up to 6 power as soon as possible so we can start getting that lifelink, which is great against any aggressive deck. And then the body from the Lazotep Reaver can also help us chum block and gain more life that way as well. And then of course the Lazotep Reaver also gives us a zombie army that we can maybe sacrifice to the Soul Diviner to draw cards. Then of course we've got the full 4 copies of Dreadhorde Invasion as well as 4 copies of Tyrant's Scorn, which doubles up as a removal spell, but also maybe a way to save one of our creatures, since we can choose between destroying a creature with convert mana cost 3 or less, which does hit most of the important cards in this format, including Feather, which at 4 toughness survives cards like Moment of Craving, and being legendary doesn't die to cast down, and can also take out Hydroid Crisis, which has convert mana cost 2 when it's on the battlefield, so it can still hit some relevant late game cards as well. And then it can also return target creature to a sonar's hand, which means we can bounce an opposing creature, maybe an opposing token, and kill it. And we can also use it to save our own creature from removal by returning it to our hand. So that also means that against a control deck that doesn't play any creatures, Tyrant Scorn is not a dead card since we can still return one of our creatures back to our hand, maybe return something like a Lazotep Reaver, and we get to amass an additional time, so we get a little bit of value out of our Tyrant Scorn instead of it being a dead card so it's a lot more versatile than something like Cast Down. Then at 3 mana we've got the full 4 copies of a Gleaming Overseer, which is a 3 mana 1-4, and when it enters the battlefield we get to amass 1, and then all zombie tokens we control have Hexproof and Menace. Those may seem like pretty random abilities, but they play very well with the amass theme we've got going on, since if we got a big token thanks to our Dreadhorde Invasion, we can protect it thanks to Hexproof, we can make it so the opponent can't simply chum block with one creature thanks to Menace, and then of course with a lifelink we make it very difficult for the opponent to race, and then against control decks they'll have to use their spot removal on the Overseer before they can reach our big amass token. Then we're also playing the full 4 copies of Treasure Map, which I put in the 3-drop slot since on turn 3 we can play Treasure Map and Scry right away, although of course we could always run it out on turn 2, occurs very nicely after playing a Soul Diviner, since we can go turn 2 Soul Diviner, turn 3 play Treasure Map Scry, and then put a counter on the Treasure Map, and then we can remove the counter with the Soul Diviner right away, which is no longer summoning sick to draw a card after having Scryed, so we get a bit of card selection and a bit of card advantage as well with the Soul Diviner. And then uh, once the opponent answers our Soul Diviner, we can eventually transform Treasure Map into Treasure Cove, which can provide more card advantage, can maybe help us ramp into our powerful 5 and 6 drops. 
Then at 4 mana we've got some copies of Vraska's Contempt, being able to exile target creature or planeswalker at instant speed, as well as gaining us 2 life, so very versatile removal spell, can deal with sticky creatures like Rekindling Phoenix, and also gives us a direct answer to planeswalkers, which can otherwise be an issue. And then we also have two copies of Angrath, Captain of Chaos, not the most amazing card ever, but still pretty synergistic in this deck, 4 mana for a 5 loyalty planeswalker, giving our creatures menace as its static ability, so also plays nicely with a big amass token if we don't already have a gleaming overseer in play. And then the minus 2 lets us amass 2, so under most normal circumstances we just get to minus 2 Angrath twice, get a total of 4 power and toughness out of it, and still get the static ability of menace until the opponent decides to deal with Angrath. Sangrath also plays well with our whole go big plan with Dreadhorde Invasion, since we can add a lot of power and toughness to our zombie army token and get it in lifelink range as soon as possible, which is great against any aggro deck. And then the Manus also just plays well when facing a bunch of chum blockers. And then at 5 mana we've got the full 4 copies of Enter the God Eternals, which is one of the great payoff cards for being this blue-black amass deck. We get to deal 4 damage to target creature and we gain life equal to the damage dealt this way, so deal 4 gain 4. Then we also get to mill target player for 4 cards, doesn't matter a whole lot in this deck, don't have any graveyard synergies going on, sometimes we want to avoid milling the opponent in case they have some graveyard synergies, maybe some jumpstart cards, some creatures to return or maybe an Ascanta that they can transform faster if we mill the opponent. And then we also get to amass 4, so we get to add 4 power and toughness to the board, deal 4 damage, gain 4 life, all for just 5 mana, and also helps us grow our Dreadhorde Invasion token as soon as possible to start gaining even more life. So just a fantastic card against any aggressive deck out there. And you might think that Enter the God Eternals is a dead card against control decks, since there's no creatures for us to target, but we can always decide to target our own creature with Enter the God Eternals, and we can even target our own zombie army token with Enter the God Eternals and have it survive. So let's say we have a 1-1 zombie army token in play, we can target it with Enter God Eternals, it is dealt 4 damage and we get to amass 4, but the creature is not going to die to the 4 damage since state-based actions aren't checked until after the amass 4 has happened, so it will become a 5-5 with 4 damage dealt on it and we'll be left with a 5-5 token and that's a pretty good deal still. So it's not a dead card against control decks, so we could always target our own Lazotap Reaver as well if we wanted to and maybe don't have a zombie army token in play. So that's another easy way to get around the drawback of needing to target a creature before we get to a mass. So an excellent card in this deck. And then last but certainly not least is Liliana Dreadhorde General. 6 mana Planeswalker starts out at a whopping 6 loyalty. And the static ability on Liliana is excellent in this deck. Whenever a creature we control dies we get to draw a card. So just imagine having a Dreadhorde Invasion in play alongside a Soul Diviner. And then having a Liliana on top. We get to make a 1-1 zombie army token every turn sacrifice it to Soul Diviner to draw a card, our 1-1 token dies and we get to draw an additional card with Liliana Dreadhorde General, so this is just going to provide a ton of card advantage. And then we haven't even touched upon the loyalty abilities on Liliana, with the plus one we get to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token, which does get the advantages that the Gleaming Overseer brings, it gains Hexproof and Menace. Then the minus four makes each player sacrifice two creatures, which plays great on an empty board if our opponent has a bunch of creatures out, but also plays great alongside cards like Lazo the Reaver, which we don't mind sacrificing, and then of course will draw us additional cards with the static ability as well. And then the minus 9 ultimate ability is also game winning, making each opponent choose a permanent if they control of each permanent type, and then sacrifice the rest so our opponent will be left with a single land. And then our mana base is very straightforward, 6 islands, 10 swamps, and then all the Demir dual lands, 4 of each. So that's the deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Uh, are we keeping this? Yeah, I guess so. Diviner can draw a card on turn 3. Ooh, that's a spicy draw. Seems worth it. I'm kind of digging what's going on here. Thief of Sanity. Hmm. Drawing a removal spell would be pretty great here. Let's see if we can uh, make that happen. Alright, asking you shall receive. Hmm. 
Yeah, I did end up cutting the bleeding edge. Could still be okay, but I'm um, trying something else for now. We need an island if they play another thief. Thought sure. Might take God Eternals, might take Angrath. Takes Angrath. Alright. Well, we know that uh, God Eternals can target their own amass token and survive, so that's neat. And there's a land, so I say we go for it. Opponent kept up two mana. Might be a bit of a waste to cast it right now, honestly, if they have another thief. But we might just play Liliana next turn anyway and make him sack it. Eh, let's, let's try this. We get kind of punished by a cast down, I guess. Alright, some cast downs and contempts gone. I will keep the Soul Diviner on tap to draw a card. It seems more important than uh, doing anything else. Alright, they did have a cast down, so they let us gain the four life. Mother Scorn. So we've got another thief covered. And we get to learn more from the opponent's deck by milling them, which is useful. Alright, Kefnuts. Land is great here. So we can Liliana minus, get rid of Kefnets. Could also bounce it for a turn, but eh, I like minusing. Draw some cards. More scorns. So we could draw a card by removing a counter from Liliana. Is that better than getting in two damage? Uh, probably. So I'll just pass a turn. And don't want to do it right away in case they have another Thought Erasure. Like, we're not going to ultimate this Liliana. And the difference between... One and two loyalty is probably not huge. Alright. Well, Liliana seems like a strong card. And the uh, tokens from Liliana also have Hexproof, thanks to the Overseer and Manus, so that's nice. So all the synergies. Rise and shine. Mr. Freeman. I think I'll take two here just to keep up Contempt and Scry. Ooh, commence. So we will put a stop on end step. Um, do we want to bounce this right now? Seems okay. Put a stop on upkeep so we can scry with the map some more. Yeah, I'm kind of digging this. Nice mix of like a bit of pressure with our creatures, a bit of card draw, some planeswalkers, diversify our threats. Our deck is horrible against that green-black sorcery that destroys artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, lands and creatures because they get the full 5 for 1 against us. Enter God Eternals, fair enough. Can this bounce their own creature too? It does, so we could have even, like, bounced their own uh, Overseer here if we wanted to. Uh, to target creature and gain life. But Andrew God Eternals still targets a player as well. So we wouldn't have fizzled uh, God Eternals by bouncing our own Overseer. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Good 
suppose we should have scrined before drawing with Liliana here. Another invasion seems okay. Alright. So what are we doing here? Can plus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Liliana's crazy. Get in there. Now well, we should have all the angles covered here. Alright, sweet. Well, this game was nice. Got to see all the the different synergies. Alright, what about this one? Looks good. Man, I'm just so giddy looking at these basic land arts. Our deck is just so flavorful. I can just feel like I'm part of the the war on Ravnica playing this deck. We're playing the bad guys, but that's okay. Liliana's gonna have a change of heart and then everything will be fine. That's a good one. Opponent's going pretty hard on the ramp here. Uh-oh. Are they gonna frill Mystic us, chat? Probably should have kept the Reaver back to protect Angrath. Manus got a double block. Alright, they had nothing at instant speed. I guess they're playing all the finales at instant speed so they can make a ton of mana with Reclamation. Man, we get Menace and Lifelink, and that's awesome. One mana short of casting God Eternals here, it's too bad. I think we attack before we amass, in case they have a, an, a removal spell here, they want to go all in. And Scorn also destroys the Krasis, which is nice. I feel like we want to keep Angrath at 3, and at this point Maybe we bait with the map instead of the Scorn. No, they just don't have anything at instant speed. Fair enough. Still gonna keep Angrath at 3 here. And I don't think I'm scrying on upkeep. Let's see, do we have lethal? 4, 10... Yeah, we would have lethal if they don't have anything since we amass. This is 7. They're still dead here, unless they have something. We'll draw, hope to draw land. They probably drew into something by now though. Overseer. I guess we'll play the Overseer first. See if it resolves. Alright, they drew into something in the meantime. So our army has hexproof now. Doesn't help against Settle the Wreckage. It looks like they maybe wanted to respond. And kill our zombie. Well, hopefully they aren't debating us with oops. Alright, no trap. That's good. So, 
And Grath dies, that's fine. The menace was quite relevant this game, actually. Alright, cleansing Nova, destroying all creatures, fair enough. Soul Diviner, a little bit late to the party. Uh, I guess it's still good. We kind of want lands for Liliana, but the treasure map's about to flip anyway. Yeah, we're probably not winning this game unless your opponent doesn't have a giant X draw spell. We'll see. Got pretty close though. What is this? Maybe it comments the end game. Dream Eater. It's a good one too. And with the Surveil 4 they can probably find some finisher to go with the Reclamation. They kept one card, so yeah, this isn't going to go well. What do I think about Banta Fairy with Reclamation and the new Finale cards? Yeah, could be good. Something similar to what our opponent is playing here. Show remorse. I'll show restraint. So we can flip map, Liliana hopefully resolves, kills their two creatures and the army does something. They could mine us on the map, which kind of pinches us on mana. Alright, the fairy pluses. Kind of want to land here. Don't think we need an Overseer. Although the Menace would be kind of useful. Split Liliana. That was a funky sound. Alright, got a backup Liliana. <laughs> the fairy's like the school teacher. Liliana's been naughty. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Let's skip to the good part. Yeah, I don't like what's happening here. Can check if the coast is clear with the Soul Diviner. Coast seems clear. They probably have another Cleansing Nova here, is my guess. And then they could mine us on Liliana, but then... I guess it would minus first. Opponent might have messed up. Since now we get to draw three. Alright, they're just gonna plus. Angrath can give menace. Let's just get rid of this Lara for now. Get out of my way. And then we'll Angrath. Plus Overseer. Fair enough. One mana short of God Eternals. And we have a blocker to protect our Liliana now. 
And just gotta dodge a giant X spell here for another turn. You know what? I'm not done yet. Land. Right. I mean, they would be dead to another MS here. And we'll mill the opponents. And attack their face. Sweet. Opponent got pretty unlucky not to find any payoff card, although we don't know exactly how their deck is configured. Alright, um, sure. Scoring into double overseer. Ooh, Dreadhorn Invasion. It's the mirror match. Tyrant Scorn can deal with a mass token at some point. And our Overseer can protect our mass token. So they can do the same. Opponent on Esper. Double Invasion. Opponent might get to a mass faster than we can. Don't think I want to risk the Overseer in case of like a Crowd of Carnarium. Alright, more Overseers. I think we just want to um, play Reaver and then probably kill the token after they amass in their turn. We'll deal with the Planeswalker. Our contract is voided. Think we kill it now before they draw in case they draw a counterspell. They could of course amass more during their turn. Doesn't seem super likely. And we'll bounce it. In case they make it indestructible somehow, you never know. With of Kaya, it's fine. And now we get to start gaining life. And our token has manas, so they can't chum block it with the invasion. Opponent with a Kaya's Wrath to reset the board, that's unfortunate. Alright, let's try and rebuild. I think we still play an Overseer over the map. Gotta keep up the pressure and try and punish them for their double invasion. Ooh, that's a rough one. Next turn they get to gain life with their invasion. And we can't return the favor, sadly. Yeah, now we're probably in trouble. Well, let's just play infinite uh, Gleaming Overseers here. Of course, thanks to Manas, they can block. But now they get to gain 8, and uh, we're probably not winning this race anymore. Jeez. Well, it's too bad. So we can uh, enter God Eternals, gain 4, um, then gain another 9 life, so we wouldn't be dead. And we'll mill the opponent, I guess. They've got a Teferi in there too. So now what we need is a removal spell for this mass token. Another Tyrant Scorn would do. Ok, 
Kaya's Wrath to reset. Fair enough, I think that actually helped us. I guess the invasion will end up draining us, but we can contempt now before dying to this. Don't need more treasure maps. So in response we need to do this, otherwise we're dead. And then I guess we might as well scry. Bottom the swamp, even though it could help us cast Liliana next time we get to flip the map. So I wouldn't mind drawing a Liliana. Soul Diviner. Alright, I mean, need to string together some removal. Thought Erasure takes Soul Diviner. So we'll flip the map, bottom the islands. Another map, so we can still draw with our map on our upkeep to find a contempt or some way to gain life at instant speed. For now we can chum block. I mean we would be ahead if it weren't for the life totals. So first we get to scry. I guess end of turn we get to scry as well. Bottom that one. Upkeep, scry. Need a contempt here. Draw. That's no contempt. Alright, now we die to our own invasion, sadly. That was a close game. This hand seems fine. It's always tricky whether to lead with Invasion or Soul Diviner, since if we lead with Invasion we get to a mass sooner, but we need to untap with Soul Diviner before we can draw cards with him. So I think it's situational when we want to play one over the other. If we were facing, let's say, an Asper Control, probably want to make sure the Invasion resolves. Steam Vents instead. Yeah, against Steam Vents I think I still play Invasion first. They could have Lava Coils or Lightning Strikes for Soul Diviner. Not really the case for Invasion. Opponent on Grixis. And Overseer's not bad. Can protect our investment here, although sadly we don't have double black, so we can go Soul Diviner plus Reaver next turn. I think I still play the Overseer for now. And if they want to kill the token, that's okay. I syncopate for one. Alright, no hexproof for us. Punished for not playing out a two drop, I guess. Syncopate not a card we see very often anymore. Alright, there's a black source, so now we can do both. I think I attack first. Because um, if we play the Reaver, then they could have an answer for the zombie token, and we would lose out on two damage. I'm fine if they syncopate this. I want to resolve the Soul Diviner. Opponent's considering it. Hopefully the Soul Diviner sticks around and can provide us a ton of card advantage here. Because we'll need it. Is this a Bolas? Moment of Craving. And something else, killing the Soul Diviner. And Grass Rampage. Alright, kill all our stuff, I see how it is. So, 
It could be a mistake to play Orlan in case your opponent has 4 mana bolas since we don't want to discard the Contempt. So I think I'm going to hang on to our land for now. Well, hopefully something finally gets to stick. Alright, now we can play out our land. Attack for four. Opponent might cast uh, Chemisters here. Yeah, turn two, Dreadhorde Invasion was definitely key this game. Sadly, didn't get to stick the Soul Diviner, which was pretty important too. So we've got answers for days for their Planeswalkers. Or their creatures. And their opponent's life total is dwindling. <laughs> Triple Contempt, don't know if we have any more left in the deck. Overseer does a good job here of protecting our mass token. More chemsters. Well, let's see how they intend to deal with our board here. Opponent is fine going to one. Yeah, let's play a treasure map, I guess. So they need to first answer the Overseer, then the Zombie Token, or have a Ritual Sit. Another Chemisters. Into maybe Negate. I like the new Negate animation. Says the time for Ritual Sit. Nicol Bolas. That's not gonna save you. Unless they've got like a blink of an eye. Alright, opponent explodes. So yeah, we played a turn to Dreadhorde Invasion and then we gave our token Hexproof for a couple turns and that was good enough. Alright, decent looking hand. So this is kind of a beatdown draw. And against Monorad, the plan is just to get an invasion in play and make our token as big as possible, as quickly as possible, to try and give our token lifelink. And this hand could be okay at doing that. They might have a shock or lightning strike to kill the token. But a uh, chain waller is not gonna get us. And yeah, once we get our token up to 4 toughness, it becomes increasingly more difficult for them to kill it. And there's the Chain Whirler. Try and protect our investments of our zombie army. And then next turn we get a 5-5, five, five, a mass token, and then we can play Reaver or Angrath and get that lifelink against the red deck, which is usually game over. So I'm not gonna risk blocking with Overseer, otherwise they could somehow still kill our token. I'm fine either chomping with a Reaver or taking 3. I guess chomping with Reaver's fine, in case they have some spectacle cards. Shock to the face. Is this a light of the stage? Sure is. Finds a second light of the stage. And the uh, firebrands would normally be pretty good against a big life linker since you can chum block and unsack it to prevent gaining life, but thanks to the menace from Overseer, that doesn't work. 
And Angrath can give menace as well. And I think uh, this is pretty much game. Dreadhorde Invasion is a weird card against the red deck because you think losing one life every turn is kind of a drawback here, but uh, yeah, I think the plan against the red deck is usually just to try and get that 6-6 six, six lifelink hit in and win the game. It doesn't always work, but when it does, it's pretty nice. Uh, but for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.